What is going on YouTube? Uh, we will be taking on uh, Vestalt, I think his name is. Today, it's the king's, it's the king's bro basically. It's the king's protector here in the undead crypt. Uh, this area is a little bit of a dick to get through. There's some pretty nasty tricks in here. Um, there's a couple of times where like right here you'll have zombies sitting by these bells and if you leave them unchecked they'll ring those bells and summon some real asshole enemies uh, they're like wraiths basically is what I would call them uh, I might do like a area walkthrough or something like that uh, I might not also I would advise you if you are struggling with the area to go over to the uh, the wiki I was looking at it just the other day and the run through for this area looks pretty pretty accurate really there's just a couple of couple of areas that you can like really get dead severely <laughs> repeatedly many times <laughs> but uh, once you sort of get the shortcuts unlocked and figure out how the the mechanics of the area work with the various statues that summon enemies every time you walk past them and stuff like that then then the area becomes a lot easier. Um, there's the path to the boss here, you gotta fight through a bunch of these um, I can't remember their names, Some, something guards, starts with an A uh, you wanna get this halberd, this halberd that these guys have, they do drop it um, it's really good, I really like the moveset on it, like the, the normal attacks are like thrusting so it works with the Leo ring but otherwise it has like a halberd moveset so it's kind of cool. It's like a cross between a halberd and a spear. Um, so you can just pull them with a bow, and you'll never have to fight more than two at a time, basically. So like, you pull two, then one, then these two, and then the other two up on the stairs. You can fight one by one, and they'll just stand there guarding the other one. Also, just stand there guarding the door, basically. Um, there is a summon for this boss fight. He, I didn't find him a whole like very useful to be honest. I, I found it easier just by myself. Find this guy's attacks, the boss's attacks. You are have to be very careful with because they have sort of a big arc to a lot of them. And if he's targeting someone else, you can think you're safe and then cop like the side of it. And I don't know. Uh, the summon sign is just to the left here on the screen. I'm pointing at it like just there. <laughs> I'm not human so it's not there anymore because I just tried it the life before this I believe. But you see you can fight these guys one by one and just circle to the right and you can backstab them very easily. Kick them while they're down basically. Uh, the boss is... I can definitely see people struggling with this boss. Uh, he's got pretty pretty nasty moves and like he takes every hit takes out a lot of stamina. Uh, so, as always, I'm pretty sure I've said it in every single Dark Souls 2 video that I've made. Stamina man management. Like, freaking pay attention to that shit. It's important. That's why I always have the Chloranthi ring on. Um, yeah, plus 10 Claymore. Here we go. So. That. Basically, you want to be moving to the right for the majority of the fight, and like that attack, you walk around and get a free hit. Uh, he he does jump around a little bit. Um, he doesn't have too many like big combos. Uh, be very careful with that attack if you don't get around to the right. Uh, it's got a very long range, like deceivingly long. Um, yeah, he never really does too many more than like a, a two-hit attack. And well, there's a three, so <laughs> that's pretty much the only three hit from from memory. Uh, has a lot of attacks that will just straight up break your guard, like you see there. Um, can circle around, but it's all positioning. Just be whenever he's got his weapon back to one side, just be careful. Even if it if it's after a swing and it looks like he's like recovering, he does do a lot of attacks from those positions where it looks like he's recovering but he actually does another swing. Um, 
and you might hear me uh, pick up on that towards the end of the fight because there's one that catches me out a few times in this particular fight. Uh, when he does this, he charges up his, uh, his Dark Voodoo. I didn't want to sit too close to him, I'm not sure if he does any AoE shit if you're right up in his face. Um, this makes him take less damage and it allows it, he has some casting attacks when he's like this like from here on in the fight. How do I not see that coming? Like... That's the attack I was talking about. He does an overhead and then he does a swing from the side when it looks like he's recovering. But, uh, just be very, just watch out for it basically. And after his normal two hit attack he can do that thrust so he can roll away from the overhead but you got to be careful with it. Like anyone with these big maces, you just you cannot fuck with them. <laughs> they will mess you up pretty quickly. Uh, this is his casting attack. Basically, whenever he kneels down, go to the side of that because it shoots out an arc of dark at about your head height. So you can roll under it. I'm pretty sure. I think I did that in the the first time that I fought him. But it's easier just to go to the side as soon as he starts channeling it, basically. And try not to get yourself in a corner where you can't get around it. So he's doing it again, so it's got a bit of a... it takes a while to channel. So it's a free heal if you need it later later in the fight. And that attack more, please. Yeah, you hear me saying there. That, that attack is just free damage, basically. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the fight. It was a cool enemy. Uh, I, I enjoy pretty much all of the the one-on-one -on -one fights in this game. So, I didn't have a problem with this at all. Uh, after this, I will show you how to... Well, anyone can do it basically. You don't need to be shown how to do it, but I'll put the, the Throne Watchers boss fight at the end of this. Uh, after this fight we get a very important item that opens up the way to the next area which I, I couldn't remember in the last video, I couldn't remember where we go after this after this boss fight but uh, we get the King's Ring and that um, means we, we can uh, that, was, that was almost English right there it means that we can go through all of the the doors that we've come across in the game that say produce the symbol of the king so now you, you can put this ring on and go through all of those doors basically and it opens up a a pathway in Dranklight Castle that goes down which is where the Throne Watchers boss fight is and it also the way you're meant to go or supposedly meant to go I guess <laughs> is uh, once again in the Shaded Woods at the the three ways bonfire, I can't remember what, exactly what it's called, but in the Shaded Woods, the the bonfire at the crossroads, uh, I think it was the path straight forward leads up to one of those doors and that will lead you into a new area, which we will be taking on in the next video. And then the game gets all, right. all dragon happy on us. So, see me there, finally bring him down. Uh, some Pretty cool stuff just after here, so I'll shut up and come back when the throne watches boss fight. All of the style. Oh, there's a lot of souls. Damn. It's time to put on a ring so I don't lose everything. Tell what that is, not even gonna lie. Is that 
That's the king. That's meant to be the king. That's ridiculous. What? What? We can, like, choose to fight him, I guess. <laughs> it's crazy talk. Oh, wow. This ring is the symbol of the king. Use it to gain passage through the king's gate and venture to the far east. Bearer of the curse. If you are to be the next monarch, then one day you will walk those grounds without really knowing why. Oh, yeah, really useful talk once again. Alrighty, so we're back here in Janglaik Castle, the first bonfire, the King's Gate. Um, put on the King Ring that we've just recently found and head to the left. This will uh, lead us into the Throne of Want area, which is basically the the throne room. You see me here getting up, getting real impatient. <laughs> um, this is not. The, this wasn't the first time that I fought them. Uh, I fought them once before this and died unfortunately uh, this is actually a fight against two enemies and you can kill one and if you don't kill the the second one quickly they'll actually revive the other one with full health and I was not ready for that and it just like that was the end of me basically once that happened I worked worked one down and then the other guy was at about half health and then he just went and revived her and I was I was a little little bit upset. But uh what I didn't know when I tried it the first time is that you can actually go human here and there's not one, there's actually two summons here. And they're they're cool summons too, like they're the they're, they're the badass NPCs that you wanna use. Um got Blue Sword Bro here, Ben Hart. Summon two? What the hell? That's crazy. Um, I'm gonna do it. I was really surprised that you could actually summon two. Like, this is where Dark Souls 2 has sort of a lower skill cap than Dark Souls 1, I think. Whereas, like, in a sort of tough fight, they have they help you out with the NPC summons, basically. Um, Bengals are just a badass. Yeah. Slow this guy. So I I can't I just chase this fight. I enjoyed it. Okay. It was pretty funny. These bros just go to really just go now. ham. Just turns into Fight Club very quickly. Uh, so just like die straight off. The you want to keep your eye on the the one that I have locked on the one I'm locked onto now. The Throne Watcher, I believe. I actually thought it was a woman the first time I, I did this fight, but it's a guy, I believe, from uh, reading the gear. Uh, but yeah, f focus her down. She has the the. I'm calling her a she again. Just he's more aggressive. Uh, I feel like he's one that you have to sort of watch more. The other guy's just like a generic knight, basically. Like his move set's nothing special. This Fight the throne watcher yeah. is <laughs> yeah the more dangerous of the two. But with these guys, with the summons, it's just it's just chaos. So it's kind of funny just to watch, but uh, yeah, I just figured I showed this for the hell of it that you can summon two people here if you are struggling. Um, this is actually the location of the final boss fight in the game, so I'm not sure what happens if you come here at the very end without having fought these guys. I'm not sure if you have to fight them with the last boss, or you have to fight these guys, then come back and then fight the last boss, or how it works. But uh. Yeah, the summons the summons are still there, so a lot of fun, bit of Fight Club action. Um, 
we'll be back tomorrow with some action from Aidia, Aidia, Aldia, Aidia, something like that. Dragonland. Let's do it. Bye. Or you can just beast mode this fight with summons, apparently. Thanks, fellas.